When I was recording my Let's Explore Google Search video, I made a note in my export to testing notes for a tool idea, the binary chopper. And that's what we're going to create in this video. So you can see here the notes that I made when I was uh, recording the video. It was for a binary chopper application. So with a binary chop, if I'm testing an input field, right, I know the end value, say it's uh, 2048. If I put in 2048 characters and the system doesn't accept it, then I need to try a different value. So first of all, I'll try 1024, because that's half of 2048. If the system accepts 1024, then I'll want to go midway between 1024 and 2048, which will be 1536. If the system accepts 1536, then I'll want to go up again. But I'll only want to go up half the distance because I'm binary chopping the distance each time and I'm trying to narrow in on the final value. So let me create the code here. And I'm going to be using the code from the test tool hub on GitHub. So github.com slash evotester slash test tool hub. And you'll find all the code that I'm creating here because test tool hub essentially is a repository for my test tool code. And I'm going to create a kind of rough tool, but I'm going to do that through at test methods. So the first thing I'm going to do in my test code branch is create a package. And I'll call this the binary chopifier. Because remember, I can change names later on, but I quite like the name binary chopifier. So I'm going to create a class. And because I'm creating the binary chopifier and I'm using a test to do that. I'll just call it create binary chopifier test. I can rename things later on so I don't tend to worry too much about the initial names. And the first thing I'm going to do is copy in my notes, my plan, That's essentially what I'm going to do to build this. I'm not going to format this, I'm just going to copy this in as a comment. So I've got this available for reference as I write the code. So these are my initial ideas, my initial plan. So I'm going to create an at test method. And I'm just going to use this to explore the algorithm because I haven't written this algorithm yet. But you can see that what I think I'm doing is I've got an initial value then I increment that value. So I have to calculate an, an increment each time over a loop. So let's call this calculate binary chop for start and end from the thought algorithm. Let's do that. So I'll start with a start, which is going to be 1024. And I'll also have my end value, which is 2048. Now I think I've got a chop point because each time through I calculate a chop point where I'm chopping this. So I'll have a variable for that. And I'll set that to start. And I'll also need an increment, which again, I'll start as the start value. And as we go through the loop, we'll calculate both these variables. And I want to loop round until that increment is, uh, while the increment is greater than zero, let's keep the loop going. So first of all, I have to calculate the increment. And the increment is the end minus the chop point, the difference between the two divided by two, because I'm binary chopping it. So I've calculated the increment. I then need to recalculate the chop point. So the chop point plus the increment. And then I'll output the information to the console because then that will act as a tool. And I'll output the value and the increment, and I'll do that just through a string format with a percent %d to output the integer. So I'll output the chop point followed by the increment. So if I run that, let's see if we got the algorithm correct. Okay, so close, but not quite. 
that final value should be 2048, or I wanted it as 2048, but it's 2047. So that's because I'm incrementing, and the last increment is 1. If I divide that by 2, then I get 0. So probably I don't want to increment up. What I want to do is diff backwards from the end. That makes a little bit more sense. So if I change this code so that my increment is not using the chop point, instead I'm I take the increment and then I take it away from the end and calculate the chop point that way. Then I get the the values that I'm looking for. But this algorithm looks a little bit complicated. Now that we've changed it that way, I'm not convinced I actually need that chop point. What I probably want to do is just calculate a diff each time and then take that diff away from the end and just keep halving that diff. So I calculate the diff as n minus star, use that in the loop so that I, I loop around until the diff is zero. Then I calculate the diff as just continually chopping. So I don't need that chop point calculation anymore. And in the output, I can calculate the value with end minus diff, and I'll just output the diff. So if I run that, I think it's simpler. I think I should get the same results. Okay, so that's good. So now we have a tool. Right, it's a very simple implementation of the algorithm, but because it's implemented as an at test method, I can run it from within the IDE. So I can just change the start, change the end, and I can calculate the binary chop for 50 to 250. So there we go, we see I start at 50. If that is accepted, then I'll bump up to 150. If that's accepted, I'll bump up to 200. And at any point, if I get one that's not accepted, I'll recalculate my binary chop so I can zoom in on the value. And there we go, it's a very simple tool. I'll check that in, it'll be in the code base. And what we'll do next is I'll take this, then I'll refactor this into a set of library classes and functions so that it's more maintainable and more reusable by anyone else. And then possibly in video three or video four, I'll incorporate that library into the main GUI and we'll have a, a real tool for doing binary chopping to support my exploratory testing. <laughs>